I talked with Liz about her recent record-breaking hike on the 273-mile-long trail. Liz, otherwise known as Mercury, is an incredible runner, hiker, piano player, and friend. I met Liz in 2020 as she was attempting to set a fastest known time on the 2,200-mile Appalachian Trail. Since then, she has gone on to set FKT speed records on the 335-mile Penhody Trail, SCAR, and just recently, the Long Trail. Please welcome Mercury to the channel. Thank you so much, Liz, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. How did you get into FKTs? Um, it all started with the Appalachian Trail. I learned about the trail as a little kid and uh, and just thought it would be really neat to do the whole thing one day. I think I just, I read about what Jennifer Barr Davis had done on the trail and, she, and she's not a runner, she hikes the whole thing, but just like that, that's when I first learned about like speed records on the trail. Worlds kind of collided when I read about Scott Jurek later breaking Jennifer's record. I was like, oh my gosh, he like stole my idea because like I always thought it would be so cool to run the trail. And you know, me not having any idea of the history of like David Horton doing the trail and all that, you know, legendary ultra runner. Like, you know, I, I'm not the first person to have ever thought of this idea. But like in my mind I was. Way back then I just kind of picked a year and I happened to pick 2020 not knowing obviously like what kind of year that was going to be and um and I was like that's the year I'm going to do the AT but then like as I was training for the trail um and then when the pandemic hit I was like oh I like you know I still want to try to get ready for this adventure but how can I do that like when I'm in Oregon and in my backyard so I, I just found like local routes and things to go after and that that actually that just kind of like occupied me through that pandemic and so so yeah i just kind of started like checking these little fkts off my list fast forward to doing the appalachian trail you know it didn't go at all as i expected which that now i know it's like oh well these things never really go as you expect <laughs> learned a lot about myself and what i'm capable of and like what I can push through. And I, I just, I felt like I unlocked some kind of superpower or something. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Like I want to do more of this. So since then I've been finding like multi-day challenges. So I did the Pinhoti trail earlier this year. And then I just came off of doing the long trail. It's just really interesting. There's, there's people out there that comment on stories and FKTs and these stories like why would you do that like what why and it's it's hard to explain um but I feel like what you said is like it, it there's something that happens when you're out there just something about it just draws you back and it's just hard to explain and I thought that was interesting what you said what makes you choose a trail to complete an FKT on? Because it seems like you're drawn to the East Coast. Is that is that right? Uh, yes, I definitely have been. The, the Appalachian Trail kind of started it all. And I, I think it, it's, it must be just because of that initial childhood connection and, and just feeling, for whatever reason, I can't really explain it, but just feeling very connected to those mountains. Sometimes there are practical reasons for choosing a route. I'm on the academic calendar and they, they have a spring break. And I was like, ooh, like what can I, what am I gonna do with my spring break? So I was just like, well, I wanna go do a trail. <laughs> like, <duh. laughs> <It's really cool. laughs> In March, so I'm like, okay, well, I, like it would be cool to explore more things on the West Coast, but everything's under snow. I've narrowed it down to like the Washita Trail and the Pinhoti Trail. Fear definitely drove some of my decisions too. I find I pick out things to be afraid of, which may or may not be rational, but I was like, well, if I, it's like tornado season, if I go to Oklahoma and I don't, I don't want to get swept away by a tornado. So I don't want to do that trail. And it's like, I don't, well, that's a very like extreme, like <laughs> scenario that like, you'll, it probably won't happen, but I don't know. So sometimes there are, it's like there are practical reasons for choosing a trail, but then I'll find like maybe silly reasons to, to not do a trail just cause like my 
my fears get to me too. Give us the reason why you chose the long trail because you've had a long, you've had a long history. What it was a year, two years now that you've been getting ready for the long trail. Um, give us like a, a uh, idea of why you chose the long trail and then also um, a synopsis of your journey with the uh, trail so far. Not too long before I started the AT, Joe Stringbean McConaughey set off and did his, um, and it was his second attempt um, on the long trail. But it, it was really fun just following along and that that just kind of got me more intrigued about the long trail. And and also I had read about Jennifer Farr Davis's experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I went and hiked the AT, but you know, so it's like the AT goes right, the long trail goes left. So I just kind of always had that curiosity of like, oh, I wonder what it's like when you go left. I did, I had a lot of confidence after doing the AT just be, yeah, like I learned a lot about myself and my capability and kind of like this mental strength I, I didn't know I had. And I was just really exciting about tackling something else big. So the next summer I assembled, um, a support crew and wanted to go for the supported record and and just kind of like drafted up this really ambitious plan as I do. Um, but then I came back and um, you know was really hyped up for this attempt. But then like just think things on the first day I uh, just kind of went wrong <laughs> and and that, it wasn't I mean nothing like catastrophic. But I did it, the the weather was like muggy and humid as it is. And I had hiked in a lot of muggy and, you know, warm weather before and thought, you know, I, I can handle that. It's fine. But I don't, I ended up like chafing really bad um, to a point where I was just like wailing and screaming. And it, it was, it was really painful. Like it seems so said, like, yeah. You said it felt, you wrote something in one of your blog posts that it was, a thousand needles. It felt like a thousand needles. Was that kind of the wording you use? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. 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 That the way you word that in your blog, I was like, Oh, I feel <laughs> that. And we did, we did get things kind of patched up and like lubed up and, <laughs> um, and, you know, they sent me on my way for the next section, which was just a few miles. And, uh, by the time I, popped out the next road, I was like happy and smiling again and, and the pain had gone away at all. But basically there, there was just some like decision-making among like myself and the crew about what to do next. And I, uh, and I'm very much a people pleaser and got overwhelmed. I kept going, but the next day went just like, okay, but I was still very in my head, very emotional, very upset about the, the synergy of the group, just was not feeling great. I think it was two and a half days in. I, I had a really rough section from uh, Camel's Hump, one of the mountains, down to Appalachian Gap. Like on top of all the emotional stuff, I think I just wasn't taking care of myself and just like majorly bonking and moving really slow and 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 i just and i decided to stop after that we kept going but not for a record anymore and i i finished down where the trail met the at so at least there could be some sense of completion like i've already done the at portion so like why don't we at least continue going south until i get to the sign like yeah. where the long or not where, long, where the, the at splits off and um, so you've you at that point you had completed like all the miles of the long yeah. trail. But I still feel kind of unresolved. I'd really like to go back. I'd really like to try again, but like maybe I need to try something different. Maybe I want to do it in a different way. So, so, so I like thought of the idea of going um, self-supported like backpacking style. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like I, I need to like get better at backpacking before taking this on and kind of just get a feel for what I'm doing. So, so that's what gave me the idea to go do a, a spring break hike mm -hmm. earlier this year um, and, and get some more experience. And that's kind of what led me to hiking the Pinhoti Trail. So then, yeah, fast forward to the summer, a couple of weeks ago, I, you know, felt, felt pretty confident, was ready to start my self-supported long trail attempt. Um, but then it was almost just kind of like the same thing as the first year. I started from the northern terminus and went south. And, you know, I made faster, 
progress than I had made the year before when I was supported. And I, as far as I could tell, I was like, I'm feeling good. And I ended up reaching the very farthest place that I had planned to go, um, the Round Top Shelter at 45.7 miles. And I felt really good about it. and was like patting myself on the back. And I had an ambitious day planned for the next day. So I was like, well, I'm going to get up at one o'clock. I'm like nine to one. That's pretty good. Like that's for this kind of thing to me. Like that's a lot of sleep. So on day two, you had 44, less than 44 miles. Yeah. Yeah. The next morning and started hiking and from Round Top Shelter, it's, it's mostly downhill. Um, and then you're kind of in this, I think it's the Lamoille Valley for a little while you get a nice walk on a bike path you get a nice kind of easy walk up a dirt road and it does get steeper and steeper because you're starting to ascend um sterling or white face mountain and it does eventually turn back into like a single track trail but as soon as i started going uphill that's just when it struck me how just completely fatigued I felt and I was like oh no like what's happening I feel awful like why do I feel so awful I, I felt so good finishing the first day and it, it just didn't feel right I was like okay I need to like sit down and reset like eat some food I feel like I just have no energy at all like I, I just feel completely depleted and happened so soon into this journey too. I was like, you know, I expect to feel tired, but maybe feeling like this on like the fourth day or the fifth day, like got more and more demoralized as I went up. And I, I kept having to just like pause and, you know, kind of catch my breath. Like my phone had died the night before, but um, this hiker, um, who I had seen as headlamp at Bear Hollow Shelter. And I just said, hey, could I use your phone and call my dad? Would that be okay? And he, I, I always feel weird, like, asking for stuff. But he was just like, sure. Called my dad and said, hey. like, I, And he didn't answer, probably because he didn't rec recognize the number. But I was like, hey, I'm. it's Liz. I'm doing fine. I didn't want him to, like, be worried. I was like, I'm okay. But... My plans changed. I'm wondering if you can come get me yeah. um, at the next road crossing. And, uh, and and then I used my little, I had a little Garmin tracker with me. So I used that to kind of text him where to get me. The rest of the way was mostly a long, long descent down to um, Smuggler's Notch, which is kind of sandwiched in between Sterling Pond and the mountain I just come off of and Mount Mansfield, the like the highest point in Vermont. And, and that, and that was another reason I was like, I like Mount Mansfield is next and I feel like poop. As I was descending, I was looking across the valley and up at Mount Mansfield. And I was like, how am I supposed to do that? You know, I know you can't always like pinpoint it to one thing, but in this case, I really do think I could pinpoint it to one thing, which was food. I really don't think I ate enough. I had packed enough food with me, but I wasn't really regulating or like keeping an eye on how much I was actually eating. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like I came out, I literally like moved to Vermont for the summer to pursue this dream. Um, but also I was like, okay, like, why, you know, Vermont's this amazing place. I still have four weeks here. Like, what do I want to do with my time? Like Jen, Jen Henry, who was one of my, she, she was part of my support crew last year. And, and she, she texted me, just this like really beautiful text. And she kind of just planted the seed of like, what I got out of it was like, well, I still like really want to hike the long trail. I really want to do a through hike. Like what if I do the through hike, but you know, not put any pressure on it, like do it for fun instead of trying to like force something to happen, like just kind of let it unfold. But then of course, like the way my mind works, I still like to have a plan. <clears throat> um, I like to have goals. And I was like, well, what if I just made myself like a more 
conservative plan <clears throat> um, that just feels like it doesn't feel overly ambitious. It feels manageable. It feels fun. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of going like day to day to day and thinking like, yeah, this looks good. This looks good. And then so as I was making this little northbound plan, I was like, you know, I still think I can make it up there in two days and like feel pretty good. So I was like, well, yeah, why don't I just try to do that? I was like, if I get to Bear Hollow Shelter in five and a half days, and if I still felt good, theoretically, like I could get to Canada in a day and break the record. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just kind of like this light bulb moment. And then, and then I was like, oh my gosh, Liz, what is wrong with you? Like you are planning a fun hike and now you're trying to break the record again. Like started to like get excited. And, and I also liked the idea of like, well, I don't even know what's going to happen. Like, I don't have to do this hike for a record. I don't have to, like, this is still a, a fun hike for me. It just like, I just am happening to put myself in a maybe position to do it if I still feel good later in the hike. And like, I don't have to worry about it until then. <laughs> so anyway, I, I just kind of assembled that little plan and, um, and checked the the upcoming weather and saw the next week was looking really good aside from some storms on uh tuesday the 12th everything went to plan including the, like having fun being relaxed like just really enjoying the trail having a good time um and and i did make it to bear hollow shelter at the end of that fifth and a half day wow um and and just found myself in this incredible position of like, oh my gosh, like I I can do this. Not on that last day, I I I was well on my way and and making good time. And I just kind of had this crisis moment where I I couldn't believe I was doing it, and because and I was like, I never thought I'd be able to I, I didn't even starting it I was like well I'm just gonna take this one day at a time I'm gonna like see how it goes but I've like failed and failed and then I found that it was happening and I was getting closer to Canada I like couldn't comprehend it and then I did start freaking out <laughs> and I was like what why am I, I why am I freaking out like I I'm doing it. Why do I think I can't do it? It was like a weird psychological block. And, um, and I, I like was trying when, when, when I have freak out moments, I try to just look at the facts because, you know, facts do not lie. Even when I recited those things to myself, I still didn't believe it. And I, I didn't know what to do. So I like got on my phone and started calling people. Like, I just had to calm down and I just kept moving and the miles just kept clicking by. And just as time passed, it became more and more apparent that like, I'd, some, I'd have to, something would have to happen for me to not get this record. And I, and I reached the last major peak, J peak about a little over nine miles from the finish and finally felt the weight lifted. And I was like, there's it's just nine miles and it's not they're not hard i have all this time like uh, holy crap and i actually like sat down on, on the top of j peak for a little bit and i uh, and just like met, texted my family and and i said all just a little i hadn't posted anything on social media because i didn't want to put pressure on myself but i was like oh like i want to let people know this like really cool thing is happening so i just posted a little blurb that I had already written on Monday about oh, like, yeah I, I remember to... reading that and I was like oh yeah. my gosh she's <laughs> yeah the rest of the way I I want to say it was smooth sailing I was getting to a point where I was over 40 miles for the day and and something like I, I don't know 16,000 feet of elevation gain and a lot a lot of rocky stuff and my so yeah like my my feet were really hurting the and day, I was me ready to that... be in yeah, sixteen thousand feet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like in my head, I was like, I was sitting there, I was like sixteen thousand, sixteen thousand. <laughs> At least, like according to Strava, I mean, who knows? But like, it's that it was hot. <laughs> I I crossed the last road crossing, and at that point, there's only two point six miles left, and it's like 
super easy, all relative, but easy for the long trail, 2.6 miles. And like the sun was starting to set, like the forest was really beautiful. There were like patches of like orangey sunlight kind of being cast onto the trees. And, and my friend Ted was waiting there for me at the end and he got a little video of me finishing. And and it was just like this cool little quiet moment. Like it wasn't, I just kind of was like smiling and laughing and like stumbling down these last few rocks to like touch the, I, you know, touch the last, well, not blaze, but it was, you know, there's like a little like monument at the end. Hey. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> It took a long time for it to sink in. In the hours afterward, I I like still couldn't believe it. I think it's because it's just this thing I've been wanting for so long yeah. and, and just didn't think it would happen. Well, that's an incredible story. I can't believe that like, because I haven't heard anything about this third attempt. And so the fact that, I mean, how it all happened and I mean, how you finished is just beautiful. I can't wait to read it too. Uh, for all of y'all who want to read the full trip report, Liz has a website and I will tag that below in the description. How do people stay up to date with what's going on in your life? Instagram, Facebook, uh, blog? Um, Instagram, Pink Feathers, and, and I have a newsletter that goes out. It's tinyletter.com slash mercury on the run. You know, post mo most of my stuff on just right on my website at mercuryontherun.com as well, so. And lastly, what is next? Ooh, yeah, I, I was of course thinking about that on yeah. the long trail. I was like, this is so much fun. I love hiking, what do I wanna do next? <laughs> like, That's really how it goes. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I have a few ideas percolating. I mean, I'm getting ready to go back to school. I'm going to grad school for music in the fall. So I think it would be really cool to find ways to incorporate like musical composition into storytelling and maybe finding some kind of like performance and visual aspects of like telling stories from the trail. That's kind of like a little dream or a vision I have simmering in my head right now. I want to keep the, the fun aspect in, in hiking and running and, um, and I think it would be really cool to, to plan another through hike. I don't know like which trail or what, but I was like, maybe instead of a, a speed record, maybe this time it really is just like, do sharing more and, and writing more stories and doing more blogging along the way and just really because I, I I really like connecting with people I really like sharing I, I really like writing um I so I I'm just like maybe there's uh there's a time and a place for like the super athletic endeavors but a time and a place for the for really sharing the experience too. So, so those are just the ideas I have percolating right now. Nice, that's yeah. great. Well, thank you so much, Liz. It's been a delight and I'm sure everyone's really enjoyed that. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, Tara. This has yeah. been a delight. I always love chatting with you. Yay. All right, well, I'll talk to you later. Bye.